When a country quietly expands its naval aviation fleet, it usually signals one of two things, a routine modernization step or a strategic response to an increasingly complex maritime environment. So what does it mean when the Netherlands signs a fresh contract for three more NH-90 NFH helicopters, aircraft already central to NATO's maritime power projection? And why now, at a moment when Europe's seas are becoming strategic flashpoints? At first glance, three helicopters may not seem transformative. But this acquisition is less about quantity and more about capability. The Netherlands isn't simply adding to its fleet, it is doubling down on a platform that has evolved into one of NATO's most sophisticated maritime helicopters. These new NH-90 NF-8s will arrive not as incremental upgrades, but as fully modernized Block 1 machines incorporating the latest software release 3 suite, SUR-3, a package that fundamentally elevates their operational reach and lethality. The NH Industries announcement underscores this shift. Assembly by Leonardo in Italy ensures the new aircraft arrive with enhanced sensors, data link 22 connectivity, a next-gen electro-optical system, integrated modern sonics, and expanded weapon options. These are not cosmetic improvements. They are the backbone of maritime dominance in the age of data-centric warfare. What does it mean for a helicopter to carry data link 22? It means the ability to plug seamlessly into NATO's secure digital battle space, exchanging encrypted real-time tactical information with ships, drones, aircraft, and command centers. It means that naval aviation is no longer just about flying and fighting. It's about integrating, synchronizing, and shaping the wider operational picture. The Netherlands understands this better than most. As one of the founding nations of the NH-90 program back in 1999, it has decades of institutional familiarity with the platform. When Colonel Dominique Troquet notes that the Netherlands was the first nation to use the NH-90 operationally in 2013 during counter-piracy operations off Somalia, he isn't merely stating history, he is highlighting a capability that has matured through constant real-world mission demands, from anti-piracy patrols to anti-submarine warfare, from search and rescue missions to maritime ISR. The NH-90 has become a do-everything workhorse and one of the most indispensable assets of the Dutch Ministry of Defense. But why enhance it now? The answer lies in the evolution of threats. Submarines are quieter, faster, and more dispersed. Surface combatants operate in literal zones where detection windows shrink. Hybrid threats, drones, electronic interference, covert infiltration complicate maritime security. Against this backdrop, airborne platforms need better sensors, longer reach, and smarter networks. That is exactly what SWR3 promises. Consider the new integrated sonic system. Anti-submarine warfare remains one of the most resource-intensive missions in naval operations. A helicopter capable of deploying advanced dipping sonars, processing acoustic data on board, and sharing it instantly across a secure digital network dramatically shortens the so-called kill chain, the sequence from detection to engagement. The addition of new weapon configurations strengthens that chain even further, giving the Netherlands more flexibility in how it counters underwater and surface threats. When paired with improved electro-optics for surface detection and identification, the NH-90 becomes not just a sensor platform but a force multiplier in contested waters. NH Industries executives were clear, these helicopters are entering service at a moment when interoperability is no longer optional. Axel Alocio, the company's president, praised the Netherlands for its consistent trust in the program and reminded observers that the country's original investment secured a fleet of 20 NFH aircraft. This new order signals a renewed commitment not only to domestic defense but to NATO's collective readiness. The Dutch Navy operates in some of the busiest and most strategically sensitive maritime zones in Europe, the North Sea, the Baltic approaches, and key transit routes that support NATO's northern flank. The ability to detect, identify, and target emerging threats in these waters is critical. Michael Kohlhaus of Nehema framed the acquisition as a reaffirmation of confidence in the NH-90 platform, emphasizing that this investment strengthens national defense while boosting long-term industrial cooperation. It is a reminder that modern defense procurements aren't just military decisions, they're geopolitical ones. Every new aircraft represents decades of partnerships among European industries, shared technologies, and interconnected supply chains. In an environment where Europe is increasingly seeking defense autonomy, enhancing a continental helicopter program like the NH-90 is strategically meaningful. So what does this expansion mean operationally for the Royal Netherlands Air and Space Force? First, it means a reinforced maritime helicopter fleet with full mission capabilities. These aircraft will deploy aboard frigates and amphibious ships supporting Dutch naval operations and joint NATO task forces. Second, 
They ensure alignment with other NATO nations operating NH-90 variants. Shared digital standards and mission systems allow pilots, crews, and commanders to operate interchangeably across multinational formations, a crucial factor during joint exercises and real-world crisis responses. Third, they give the Netherlands additional flexibility. Whether supporting ASW patrols in the high north, providing overwatch for anti-piracy missions, or contributing to EU maritime security efforts, the NH-90 NFH is a tool shaped for modern maritime strategy. The deeper question, however, is how this procurement fits into Europe's shifting defense landscape. The continent is rapidly rearming, adjusting to a world where maritime routes, seabed infrastructure, and naval choke points are once again contested spaces. The Netherlands, despite its relatively modest size, plays an outsized role in NATO's maritime architecture. Its frigates, submarines, and naval aviation units are among the alliance's most capable. The acquisition of upgraded NFH helicopters signals that the Dutch government is preparing for a future where maritime readiness is not just beneficial, it is essential. The timing is also noteworthy. As NATO expands its presence around the North Atlantic and Arctic regions, helicopter-borne sensors and strike capabilities become indispensable. Sea states are harsher, distances are greater, and threats, from Russian submarine patrols to cyber-electronic interference, are more complex. Airborne platforms that can deploy quickly, operate flexibly, and connect digitally across coalition networks give commanders the agility needed to manage fast-moving threats. And then there is the human factor. Crews trained on earlier NH-90 models will transition to a platform with more intuitive interfaces, better data fusion, and greater situational awareness. In high-stress maritime missions, this translates directly into faster reaction times and more confident decision-making. A helicopter that synthesizes more information more quickly gives its crew an operational edge. Ultimately, the Netherlands' decision to procure three more NH-90 NFH helicopters is about sustaining that edge. It is a proactive move that strengthens national defense, supports NATO's maritime posture, and invests in a proven, versatile platform that continues to evolve with the demands of modern warfare. The message is clear. In a world where maritime security challenges are accelerating, the Netherlands intends to stay ahead of the curve. The NH-90 NFH has already established itself as a cornerstone of Dutch naval aviation. With the addition of these upgraded aircraft, the Netherlands is not simply expanding its fleet, it is shaping the future battle space in which it will operate. And as Europe's seas grow more unpredictable, this kind of foresight may prove decisive.